Welcome to the broadcast tonight, a remarkable hour, all about Charles Darwin with two great scientists. They are James Watson and Edward O. Wilson. We can really now see uh, human evolution, and uh, we can go out and uh, begin to see the differences between the DNA of an Eskimo and uh, someone who's living in the tropics. And uh, so we really can now see evolution occurring at the level of DNA, which Darwin couldn't. Mm -hmm. And But all his guesses were really right on Mark. I mean, the man really... Yeah, it's stunning that he could do it not knowing anything about the structure oh, of DNA. Yeah, no, you know, that, that's a really good point about Darwin. Not only did he cover an immense amount of material, geology and biology, yes. but the man was always right. It's exasperating to be an evolutionary biologist and try to develop something really new no, you see. and find out that Darwin had either said it or he had uh, yeah. created, uh, a, yeah. uh, had foresight uh, to, you know, but indicate it. In my mind, Darwin was the most important person who ever lived on Earth. Wilson and Watson for the hour. Funding for Charlie Rose has been provided by the following. Coca-Cola and our local bottlers have sponsored more than 4,000 scholars like Matthew Turner helping them to attend college and prepare for careers that benefit all of us. Satisfying a thirst for achievement, the Coca-Cola Company. Charlie Rose on PBS is brought to you in part by J.P. Morgan Chase. Providing financial services and solutions to more than 30 million consumers, institutions, corporations, and governments worldwide. Additional funding for Charlie Rose was also provided by these funders. and by Bloomberg, a provider of multimedia news and information services worldwide. From our studios in New York City, this is Charlie Rose. Joining me now are Professor E.O. Wilson and James Watson. They are simply two of the great scientific minds of our time. E.O. Wilson has taught at Harvard for more than four decades. He has written more than 20 books on biology and evolution. He has won two Pulitzer Prizes. In 1962, James Watson won the Nobel Prize for the discovery of the structure of DNA. His co-recipients were Francis Crick and Maurice Wilkins. He is currently Chancellor of Cold Springs Harbor Laboratory in New York. He has also written many books. Last month, they both published two anthologies of the works of Charles Darwin, one from so simple a beginning and Darwin, the indelible stamp. I am pleased to have both of them at this table. Welcome. It's great to have you. Let me just start. Tell me, put Darwin in perspective for all of us. Uh, when you think of the great scientific and intellectual contributions mm -hmm. to humankind, what was the achievement of Charles Darwin? The achievement was not to present the idea of evolution, but to present the idea of evolution by random genetic change uh, that was then sorted out by natural selection, by the environment. Hence, uh, the origin of uh, diversity of life as we know it on Earth by autonomy by, auto, you know, independent of any outside force. And this then uh, put humanity in a wholly different light, namely as potentially having arisen uh, by uh, this, uh, you know, uncontrolled or undesigned process uh, on our own, uh, on this planet, independently. Jim? What would yeah, you add or detract from that? No, I can't detract. No, uh, no that there was no designer. Yeah, there was no designer. There was no well, creator. Let, there me, was. let me at this point uh, uh, pay my colleague a compliment. I, I don't pay compliments like this casually, but it'll also help put it in perspective. And I think you know every every era has landmarks. And I would suggest uh, that 500 years from now, 1,000 years from now, there will be two landmarks in the origin of, the, um, of, of biology, modern biology. One would be the origin of species 1859. The publication of Charles Darwin's book. 
and the other one would be the 1953 paper showing the structure of DNA by, Wall uh, by Watson and Critic. That's well, it sounds conclusion. immodest, but I did a third, <laughs> which is Mendel in 1865. I disagree. Uh, well, we won't. Uh, let's no, not go, go into I, this. But I'd, I'd uh, love to hear that. You disagree yeah, with Mendel? A, a truly uh, a remarkable, uh, but uh, what it did, uh, Jim, and uh, inform me if it's wrong. Uh, he established particulate heredity and showed us how to analyze it. Uh, but what was finally achieved, and I know you were modest enough to say that it was built upon a gradual rising platform of basic information, was to show uh, that, that uh, heredity, the key to life, really has a, an explicit and relatively simple and analyzable molecular basis. Well, it was, the discreteness was the gene, and I think just that way of thinking, which mm -hmm. Darwin didn't have at his disposal, uh, was an enormous step yeah. forward. So yeah, I would really true. say Darwin and uh, uh, Mendel, but if you want to say uh, who was um, more important, I would agree with yeah. uh, Darwin. But uh, mm -hmm. I'd put Mendel up there. Okay. okay. Uh, I understand why All you would right, put him there and why you, why you would and, and why you would. <laughs> Let me just articulate for the audience mm -hmm. the discovery of the structure of the DNA in that paper confirmed, gave what to Darwin's theory, Jim? Well, immodestly. <laughs> It gave the unit on which evolution acts, and mm -hmm. what, uh, what genetic information is, which was a collection of uh, uh, nucleotide uh, base pairs, uh, just large numbers of them. So our discovery essentially told people how genetic information is stored and how it's copied. I mean, that was our proposal. And, and the essence of what Darwin had said was that you know, in the origin of the species, it is passed from the fittest, from generation to generation, without yeah. having any understanding I, I, of genes or DNA or anything yeah. else. Yeah. Okay. That's why I, you know, <laughs> mentioned Mendel was pretty important yeah. because he did. It wasn't blending; it was discreet. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, actually Darwin, uh, the one place he fumbled, that is, he couldn't really come up with anything solid, was in heredity. It's true. He, uh, he, he didn't understand the. He, he understood that it he had to happen, but he didn't know oh, quite why. He didn't have. He didn't, well, even, he didn't even have Mendel to look to. Yes. Mm. Uh, but I, you know, let me put it this way. I don't want to start going off in uh, uh, on a tangent, uh, but it is relevant to this. The way I see it is that modern biology now has pretty well established two laws. I think you know, at the level you could almost call laws or basic well-established principle for which there is no known exception. The first is that um, all organic process, all living process and, and elements uh, are ultimately obedient to the laws of physics and chemistry. Now that was an extremely important step, you know, to finally mm -hmm. get established that so we could start testing it. The second law is that all living systems and process evolved by natural selection. And that, in a nutshell, is modern biology. Jim can disagree if he wants to, no, but no, that's, that's the way no, I see I, it. No. Uh, okay, that's, and I, think, yeah. I think if we were to teach biology from the top down, starting with those two laws, we would have a, and, and show what the evidence is and what it's created, we would have an off, a lot less problems with controversies over biology. You mean in terms of what we have, what controversies are you speaking to? Uh, well, specifically on the right, so uh, so to speak, a disbelief that evolution even occurs or that it must be guided by Did, did I God. see a poll, I think in an article in Newsweek magazine, which wrote about the real Darwin, there he mm -hmm. is, uh, that 80% of people in America believe in creationism or believe that in the Bible's theory of... You're close. It's uh, 85. Uh, well, it's 51 percent. CNN poll of about three weeks ago. 51 percent uh, of Americans say evolution never occurred. Uh, 34 percent said evolution occurred, but God guided it. And 15 percent said, well, I guess science is right about it. Yeah.